Hey everybody, this is Charlie Got Out here. And I'm Zach Burks. And uh, today we've got uh, a question of the day here today. So Zach, why don't, you, why don't you kick things off? Yeah, Charlie, so I wanted to try doing something a little differently. Um, you know, we talk with hundreds of entrepreneurs every month, whether it be on, you know, uh, calls to sign up for our coaching programs, uh, with, within the groups that we belong to, out on the street, you know, whatever. We, we, we often have so many conversations and uh, over a period of time in the last you know, few years, we just hear so many of the same questions keep coming up, right? So many of the same challenges and problems. And so we thought, why don't we just try to do uh, a series where we just answer a question each, each video and we'll try to address it the best we can to, to really help and provide value. So today we have a question, um, and I think it's one that we hear a lot, and uh, I'll let you kind of jump in, but what is that, what is that one question? Well. You know, I think it all comes around with why am I getting ignored? Why are my leads passing me over? Um, and, you know, to, to illustrate this point, I've got a little bit of a, of a story here. And, you know, that is when, when my, my wife and I met, we went out to dinner, met my family for the first time. My little brother was sitting at the table with us. At the time, he was like, he was really little. And he kept saying, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, and he kept repeating that over and over again. Meanwhile, I'm carrying a conversation with everybody around the table and whatnot. And uh, Heather, uh, my girlfriend at the time, now wife, she looked at me and she hit me and she goes, will you answer him? And the thing is, is I didn't hear him because I'm so used to him going, Charlie, 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 that I ignored it because it was the mm -hmm. same message over and over and over and over again. And when you look at what's gone on over the last several years, what you're going to see is there's more and more and more noise, right? So the yeah. latest statistic that I read was that the average person gets hit by 3,000 messages every single day. Holy so cow. That's pretty intense, right? Yeah. And so when you look at 3,000 messages every single day, we obviously can't pay attention to every single thing that goes on. So what ends up happening is in order for us to, to capture somebody's attention, we almost have to sort of, um, uh, we, we got to be much more relevant to them. Right. And by nature, and it's just neurologically the, the way that we're programmed and whatnot, we're more designed to respond to, um, a problem right? As opposed to a solution. And when you look at all the competition out there, number one, they're all saying the same thing, you know? So if we choose, if we just pick on web design companies, uh, for instance, you know, everybody's saying they design the best websites or they're the most creative or whatever it might be, right? Or agencies that talk about how they can help generate more leads and this, that everybody's kind of always talking about the solution. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody's ever really taking a step back to, identi to identify what is the very precise, specific problem that they're gonna identify and who are they identifying, or who are they fixing this problem for? You follow me so far, is this making sense? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm probably, and I can probably say this, uh, I'm gonna throw you under the bus a little bit, but you and I are probably <laughs> the quintessential like, ADD uh, type of people where my attention span is probably even shorter than the average bear uh, when it comes to like websites, messages, ads, you know, like I just feel like I see so many of them. And, and part of it is just because of the nature of what we do and the space we're in. Um, but I think even for like the average person, just, they're just bombarded with so many different messages that it's really, um, and, and they're all the same, right? It's all like, yeah, I can generate more leads for you two to ten, 10 more leads a week but when you see something or someone who can directly speak to the challenge or the pain point that you're you're facing at that moment you're more likely to to make that decision um, and sign up with them or use their product or their service or or whatever it may be without even really knowing much about them right just simply because they know so much about your problem you're like wow this person gets it you're like ready to, to move forward. So this, this makes a lot of sense to me. So w with that in mind, I mean, like, how do you think, um, where do you, where do you start? Where, where does, let's say I have a website, I'm, I'm, I'm having, you know, I have something that says like, I provide 
uh, technological services and solutions that are, you know, <laughs> you know whatever, right? That You're already hospital. giving me a headache. But, I mean, because that's the way everybody speaks, right? You know, right. So let's say I have that. How do I, what's the first thing I do that I need to, um, to change that kind of positioning and messaging without doing like a complete rebrand? Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, I got to change my website again. I don't think it has to be like a complete overhaul, but like, let's say we just shift our mindset a little bit. Where do you start? Uh, so first, it's a matter of knowing who exactly you're you're speaking to. That's a great question, by the way, Zach. Um, but you you got to speak to to one particular person, right? And so yeah. we worked with a client uh, recently. Um, this person was somebody who felt like they did such a great product uh, that they could actually it applied to everybody, right? And so that's when we really narrowed it down and we looked at his testimonials to find out 80-20 rule. 80% of his results are coming from 20% of his market. Who are those, those 20%? And we identified it was one particular segment, one particular industry. And so we worked with him to rebrand his messaging to focus on that one particular um, uh, industry right there. And we were able to take him from an early seven-figure business to this year and now we're looking to crack that 10 million. And that's really all because people think that when you narrow your focus, you narrow your market and you narrow your market and you have less opportunity. Um, yeah. I spoke to a, a very smart man uh, yesterday on the phone and he said to me, you know what, Charlie, we were talking about narrowing the market. He goes, you know what, Charlie, uh, I have actually never encountered a single situation where the narrower we made the market where somebody actually made less money. Because it's funny, the, the narrower you made the market, the more money you end up making. Because you're then, you know, you become a little bit more specialized. When you're, when you're a lot more specialized, uh, at, at that point, people spend a little bit more attention, right? It's kind of like um, at my wife, uh, I, we've got three kids, right? And so, you know, when my wife was looking to get back into the gym, you know, you, you hear everybody talking about, you know, here's how to lose weight, here's how to lose weight, here's how to lose weight. That noise, that market is crowded. I mean, you probably get more than 3,000 messages in the weight loss uh, market, right? Mm -hmm. But now when you want to drill things down, drill things down, drill things down, if you specifically wanted to talk to, you know, moms with multiple kids, you know, who have a specific problem, you know, it, it, and it's usually like, you know, they're used to having a flat tummy and they have three kids and all of a sudden, you know, things, things change and there's mm -hmm. different exercises and whatnot. You specialize in moms with multiple kids. Now, you know, all of a sudden you can very quickly become an expert. You can target those people and a mom with multiple kids is going to zoom, um, zone right in, be like, yes, you understand my problem. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first thing is narrow down that audience. And so you narrow down that audience. And the next thing is, is how specifically are you going to help them? So let's say you're narrowing it down. You're saying, okay, look, new moms, right? Or not new moms, but moms with multiple kids, right? What's the problem? You're not going to just say lose weight, right? right. You got to target that down a little bit more. What specific problem are you addressing? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see this on TV too, Zach. I mean, there's a guy on TV who builds high-end tree houses right he sells his tree houses for like twenty five fifty thousand dollars and he he does very well and then you know there's a guy who does these custom pools that are very i mean you can spend a quarter million dollars on a pool very niche but it's easy for him to dominate the market and and make a lot of money that way yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. Whenever I thought of niching, like for a really long time, and maybe this is just because I was like younger and I watched a lot of Discovery Channel at the time, <laughs> but I, uh, I always thought of Orange County Choppers. Yeah, right. you know, like, and they would make these like mega expensive bikes, but they always had a market uh, for people who wanted to, and they were a good example of. And I, I don't know where they are now, so maybe they they went too far, but um, they found like their core group, right? Um, very similar to like, if, and I'm not really like, I don't look, I, I live in the city. I'm not a country guy, but, um, duck dynasty is very similar. They knew their core group of, yeah. of like their ideal user, viewer, customer, consumer, whatever term you want to use. And then they expanded out. Right. So they started very small 
and yep. Orange County Choppers, they, they had like those, the gearheads and, you know, the motorcycle enthusiasts first, and then they scaled out and they had this big, broad audience. I think people, uh, like you said, do the other way around. They start with this really broad audience and then maybe they try to narrow down as they're not really having a lot of success. I think if you start, you know, very small and then kind of expand as you go. Sure. Actually, that's one of, one of the growth strategies that we use, right? Most uh, entrepreneurs that come to us, they're usually doing somewhere between 750,000 to about 3 million. That just seems to be roughly around where most fall in. You know, I mean, we work with people larger, smaller, thereabouts, but you know, when they want to grow, many times what we do is we narrow their market down a little bit more. Right? Mm -hmm. We're going to narrow down, down their market a little bit more and that's going to help them grow. And it, you know, it's funny if, if you're, if you're an agency, and a lot of these agencies and media buying agencies and whatnot, and a lot of consultants, their information, their experts, that it applies across the board to many, 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 many different industries, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you take uh, an agency, say a media buying agency, and you're like, look, we are a media buying agency uh, specializing in working with attorneys or specializing in working with chiropractors or specializing in working with dentists. You know, suddenly, now you become more of that expert. And it's really fun. Yeah. Um, I used this example the other day on talking with a client. And if you go to Home Depot and you look on the shelves, right, you're going to see a bunch of bug killers, right? And uh, you know, bug killers for, for everything. There's a generic bug killer. And the generic bug killer, and I'm throwing these numbers off the top of my head, I don't know, generic bug killer might be $5.99. But then like you want to kill a silverfish or you want to kill, uh, you know, whatever. Now you're specific to one particular bug. I'm sure the generic bug killer will kill a silverfish. Like I'm pretty sure of it, right? Yes, it's uh, a chemical. I'm, yeah, it's a chemical. I mean, right? Um, but the one that kills the silverfish is going to cost more. Yeah. Because it's yeah. very specific, right? Yeah. That's like um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I looked over the weekend. Um, and they had specific like repellents for like a skunk problem, right? I have a skunk problem. And I like, there was a repellent and there was like skunks. And I was like, oh, that's what I have. That's what I need. You know, that's yeah. my problem. This guy is just causing me all sorts of issues. I was willing to drop everything I owned on this skunk <laughs> <laughs> just to keep this damn skunk out. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. So um, look at the time. Next thing. So we talked about um, talking to a specific person then you know if we're talking to them what what is the the conversation that you want them to have in their head or in their mind you know as let's say they come to your website so it's got to be unique so it'll be different but i think you mentioned something early on i kind of want to touch on again you know start with the problem not the solution or, or something in that area um can you explain that a little bit more sure when when we go to to buy something anything for that matter we're always buying to solve a particular problem that we're having that's sort of what creates that that motivation and you know this is a, a lesson that I learned back when I studied in Australia I uh, lived there for a bit studying consumer behavior and it still stuck with me decades later is that you know um, it, everything that we do that uh, motivates us to take a specific purchase uh, action of desire is stimulated from problem and it doesn't matter if if you're buying lipstick, right? If you're buying lipstick, it's because your problem is you want to look more attractive. Um, right. You know, obviously, if you're buying skunk repellent, you, you got an issue because, you know, <laughs> you got, you know, a, a smelly friend. Right. Um, you know, if you're, and if you're looking for a media uh, uh, buying agency, your issue is you either want to scale up your, your leads or, um, you need leads or whatever that might be. So it's always a problem. Mm -hmm. But then the challenge is there's a gap between the the client or your prospect and the messaging that's actually put out there um, by the companies. The companies are saying, and you know, when you said it right away, it was like, it's a pet peeve of mine when I go to a website and they're like, we provide strategic solutions for, you know, blah, blah, blah. And because the, your client isn't saying, your prospective client isn't saying, oh, I need somebody who's going to be able to provide strategic solutions for me. Like, right. that's not it, right? They're saying, mm -hmm. look, I got a lead problem. Who can help me with the lead problem? And so it, that's where 
you want, so once you narrow down a, a specific client, that's where you want your headline. The first thing that people see is like, we understand your problem and we can fix it. So you might say something like, uh, you're, um, um, uh, I'm trying to think offhand, but basically, you know, if you're a dentist looking for more leads, you know, you would essentially feature the, what is the problem that they're having? You know, maybe not getting enough clients or not getting enough patients uh, or maybe uh, pay, not getting enough quality patients, drill down, you know, a yeah. little bit more. Yeah, I have a good one. Uh, actually, uh, one of our recent clients, um, he provided, and, and so he, and, and there's probably a lot of people that fall in this space. His website wasn't bad. It wasn't like this. We provide, you know, custom uh, consulting solutions, or it wasn't that super, you know, like what, what the heck does that even mean? It wasn't bad, but it, it also didn't really address a specific market or problem. It was just kind of bleh, you know, like, yeah, that, that makes sense, but I don't, it's not great either. Yeah. Uh, and, and so what it came down to is that he realized he was really, really good at providing like these IT services, right? Helping companies who are in this space, like a you know certain size of company and what they did in terms of the market they were in, the industry, complete projects on time. So like if they were behind, they were like, that's, that's what he was. He was like really good at putting out fires, right? So he could, people called him when things were just weren't going as well as they had hoped. They needed to finish this project. Investors were clamoring about it and all this stuff. Right? He was called in to be the hero. He loved it and he was really good at that. And he got paid tons of money to do that. But it didn't say that anywhere in his messaging. There was, there was, it was no trace of that. So I was like, wait, hold on. That's what you're really good at. You get paid tons of money, but well, I, you know, I, I have a bigger market. No one else is paying you that kind of money, you know? So like, why would you, why wouldn't you focus on that? So I, I, that's a good example, I think, because his website wasn't bad. It just wasn't specific to that, that one thing that he was really good at. Yeah, totally. Definitely. All right. So, Hey, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, this video just as a, as a, as a quick recap, right? One of the big growth strategies is to go from here to here to narrow down your market. And once you narrow down your market, be really crystal clear as far as the problem that you're solving for this market. And that's going to help you. So you're narrowing down the market and you're further sort of taking it to that next level by speaking to a specific problem. You know, an example that everybody would know is that you've got your general practitioner. You narrow down the market to say, okay, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a heart doctor. And then, you know, those people specifically that focus on a, a particular uh, issue related with the heart, those are the people who are going to make more money, um, really, than, uh, uh, than the practitioner. And that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do for your business and so forth. So, look, uh, if you want to learn more, you want more free strategies and all that other fun stuff, we got a bunch more free strategies, tips, resources, and so forth over at our website, predictableprofits.com. So, hope yeah. to see you there. <laughs> I'll add one other thing. If there are questions that uh, we can answer or address, uh, shoot us a message, you know, an email, whatever it is on our website. Happy to address it on here and talk about it. Um, tons of experience, hundreds of clients. I think we've seen a lot. We've seen a lot of it. So uh, happy to talk about it and see if we can help. Cool. Awesome. Hey, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you being here. See you.